Fine. Put in. Hi everybody, thank you very much for joining this training tonight. Um, my name's Jane Brown and I'm a health and wellness consultant with Auburn International and an area manager in qualification. Woohoo! Woo! Woo! Area Woo! manager come end of June. <laughs> so uh, we had a fantastic month in May. We all worked really, really hard. So, so proud of all the team. Um, but I just thought we'd jump together as a team and just do a bit of training. I've got lots of notes I've written out here. So then I thought I would just open it up to whoever wanted to jump in. So for some, some of this might be stuff that you already know um, and it's kind of basic stuff. But for others, it might be quite new. So hopefully it, it will help in some way. So I'll get straight on with the training because I've got quite a lot. So I'm just going to start off with first something that I did first thing this morning and that's something I start off with on the very first morning of every month and that's writing out my goals which I've just left on the fridge so bear with me one second while I go and grab them. I've not done my that. Danny. I've just wait I've just ready to do them now. Because you've not been to B and Q and got your paper yet. No, that, that comment really made me laugh. <laughs> so I sat this morning and wrote out all my goals. Um, so I'll just go over them really quickly. So to complete area qualification and become an area manager, and I've put the date on there as well, 28th of June 2016, to give me a couple of days leeway, not leaving it right till the last minute. I'd like to complete on 12,500, which will clear as this will be my third month so I can do that I'd like to do 4,000 PQV so that's personal qualifying volume so that will be me any clients preferred clients and then 8,500 from my central I'd like to help Rachel complete her district manager qualification so she will be in her third month so we'll be completing by the end of this month Yay! <laughs> and the same for Angela as well who's also in her third month to complete and then to help Milena who went into qualification in May which is fantastic Woo! to either complete this month or go into the third month whichever she wants to do I'd like to earn my DM bonus again so that's something I'm trying to do regularly now and alongside that to help three new business builders start their journey and help three new product users more if I can, obviously, but three is my aim and I'd be happy to get both of those. And then I've just wrote um, my affirmation at the bottom, which I'll um, read kind of over and over again. So I've just put, it is June 28th, 2016, and I'm a new area manager. I have attracted the people, the possibilities and the resources to enable me to reach this goal. I have been open to helping new business builders start their own Arbonne journey and I have been open to helping people use safer, healthier products. I'm truly grateful to my hardworking, committed, giving team, all of my clients for buying through my business and my family. So that's just something that I'll keep repeating. So goals are really, really important. And if I can get all my team to write out their goals and send them to me so that I know what you want to achieve and we can all work on them together as well, and your affirmations, so write something that's personal to you, what you want to achieve, and put it in that present tense as if you've already achieved it, and take that everywhere with you. And if you ever have any of those niggling doubts that pop into your mind, straight away pull that affirmation out and repeat it, because I find that really, really helps when you get those niggles start to come in your mind. Also record it on your phone if need be, and you can play it back to yourself. Um, just something else I wanted to go over with my team as well. If you start um, asking people about hosting parties for you, any one-to-ones you've got coming up, let me know and we'll get those in the diary as soon as we can, get those diaries. So be on the trainings as much as you can, be on the Zooms, um, study things that you feel you need to study. So um, if it's the business side you're not sure on, study that. If it's product side, a certain product you want to know more about, this, as we know, there's so much you can plug into YouTube's audio, SoundClouds. You know, it's all available then. If you're not sure where to look, ask us. But obviously on the Do More group, on the pinned post, it's absolutely jam-packed full of great stuff. So some of the stuff I'm going to go over tonight... And I've got a glass of water because I'm hoping my voice doesn't give way. Um, we're going to start off with um, product drop-offs. Um, and this is just products. This is not re regarding the business side as well. This is just products I'm going over here. 
So first of all, you need to ask people if they'd like to try some of your products or you might get people asking you if you have something that can help them with a certain problem. <laughs> Rattling around in the fridge. Hurry <laughs> up. Is that okay. it? Right. Tell you're trying to run a multi-million pound business. I know. It's a good job it's only a training video for us, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so if you're asking for somebody to trial something for you, to ask them in person or on the phone would be great. But if you can't do that, you can always send them a message. And just keep it really simple. So you could put, hi, Mary, how are you? Um, ask something about their family or their work. Just see how they are. Don't just kind of go straight in there. Make that conversation with them and connect with them. And then just say, Mary, I really want to ask you a big favour. You always look lovely and obviously take care of yourself. So I'm looking for some ladies to try some skincare products for me and thought of you. Would you put aside your current products for three days and just test a collection of botanical-based products for me and just give me a review at the end of that? And that's all you need to ask. Um, you can on the end if you find you've liked them I can help you out with some great discounts um, but there's no obligation to buy at all so it's just letting them know that they're kind of helping you out you've let them know that you, you think they always look lovely and they take care of themselves so you've got that nice compliment in there so hopefully they'll say yes so then you need to go on and ask them what their skin type is and whether they've got any allergies so that you, you can choose the right skincare bag for them. So obviously we've got the RE9 set for aging skin, which don't recommend for people if they've got sensitive skin because it's really highly concentrated. So then you've got set for oily skin, normal to dry skin, and then you've got the calm range for sensitive skin. And you've also got the clear future range for the acne prone skin as well. And also the men's RE9. So there's literally something there for everybody. So when it comes to sorting out your bags, and I know Danny went over this the other day um, with your gold bags, but so literally you can have your kind of colour coded bags. So I've got the calm in a green bag and I've got all my RE9 stuff in the gold bag. All of the products in there with the spatulas and things like the night creams and eye creams that come in a tub. And then I'll have my folder that I'm going to send along that with that, with my information in. So in there, I will have um, a covering letter just telling them about their pamper bag. And, little, and I can send any of these to anybody if they want them. Um, just a little bit about um, the products themselves, just saying that they might be different to what they're used to. Um, a little bit about what they contain and what they don't contain, but not going into masses of detail. Um, saying that they're highly concentrated, so that a dot is lot, so they only know to use small amounts. And then at the bottom, I've added on ordering options and different discounts that they can get and then my website and phone number and things so that you can contact me if there's any problem. I'll also put in there a preferred client benefit flyer, which um, I think there's actually some new ones on the source now. So it'd be worth going on there and looking for them, printing them off. And then I'll put in the product information themselves. So um, the overview sheet, whichever product set it is, and a how to use sheet. And that's about it. Really. I don't think people have got time to sit reading loads and loads of paperwork. They just want to get on and try the products and see how they feel. So that's what I'll include with it. Um, so then when you go to meet them, um, you go through that, go through the pack, show them exactly what they've got and just talk through what you've put in the paperwork again. And if they ask questions about them there, then, then yeah, go into, you know, what they contain, what they don't contain, how to use so they're absolutely clear on you know and on, on exactly what they're doing when you do see them make sure you make it clear to them that they need to use those products for the three-day trial because so many times i've had people go to pick up products after three days and they go oh, i've not even used them yet so make sure you know that they've got these fantastic products for three days and to make the most of the trial and that they don't use any of their other products while they're using these so that they can get that full benefit from them. I would always then um, contact them the next day just to make sure that they're getting on all right and see if there's any problems. And then again, um, 
perhaps uh, the day before you pick up and just remind them that, you know, hope everything's all right with your trial, meet you tomorrow to collect. And then um, before, I meant to say as well, before you leave them, um, when you drop it off, arrange the time and place there to collect as well, to go back and collect. Um, so that you can have that meeting to discuss how they got on with them. So when you do collect them, you want to be asking them what did they like or love about the products. Don't say to them, how did you find them? You want to be finding out what they really enjoyed about using them. Hopefully they will have loved them and could see the difference. Sometimes people will have certain problems or they didn't get on with them. You know, that does happen. They don't suit everybody. In that case, you could perhaps recommend trying something different different that might suit them better if they've got a specific problem um, if they did like them don't be afraid then to go over the options for ordering um, you know close it off with okay well look here's the discounts if you're interested in ordering some stuff here's what you can get explain all the preferred client benefits and also to finish off you could ask them about hosting a party for you um, you know, ask them whether they've got friends and family that would be interested in trying these as well. <coughs> so, going on to that point next, hosting a party request. So, again, if you can call somebody and ask them, um, that's brilliant. So, just say to them, um, again, have that general conversation, you know, how are you, how's your family, all that kind of thing, and then just say, I'm looking to widen my network and share these wonderful botanical products with as many people as possible. It's great practice for me. If, and if you're not sure, say that you'll be doing it with your um, teammate who's teaching you how to do this yourself. Say to them, we always have a really good giggle. It's lovely to get together with friends. So we think about hosting a party for me and explain what that entails. Because I said that to someone today. She said, oh my God, what do I have to do? And I said, it's literally no more than getting a few of your friends around and we literally come around and do everything. <laughs> um, and explain to them that as a host, they obviously get lots of lovely gifts as a thank you. So arranging a date, don't let them go out to their friends and ask all their friends what suits them because every one of those friends will come back with a different date and then the lady, the person you want to host will come back to you and say, oh, I can't get everybody together. They're all over the place. So give them a date, sort out a date between you and the host and say, right, that's the date we're doing it. And then give that to their friends. If they can't make it, they can't make it. But you can't be waiting for different answers off everybody. And then say to them, if you need me to help you compose a message to send to your friends, if you're not sure you know, what you're asking them around for, I can help you do that as well. And you can also make an online Facebook event you want. And on that, you can invite people make friends with her friends or a he if it's a he and then you can pop little um, comments on there building up to the party some posts about the products about what games you might be doing kind of little teasers to kind of get them enticed um, and excited about the party that's come um, you want to then message them a couple of days before the host to just remind her and say, you know, we're still on for the party, we've still got how many friends have we come in, so we know how many to cater for and how many gifts and things to put together. And then on the day, a quick message or call again um, and say, really looking forward to the party later and just to make final arrangements. Uh, when you're also booking the party or if you're making an event, make it clear that the party must start on time. This is a huge one for me. I really hate it when you're there and you said the party's going to start at half past seven and me and Angela had this the other night and it was about ten past eight by the time everyone arrived and we got started. Which is, you want everybody to be there, but the guests that do arrive on time and arrive early are just sat waiting, so it's not fair on them. And of course, it just is it later and later on into the evening. So just really try and, and you know, got to start on time. Yeah, and one thing that I say, because um, I have the same, is that if the party's starting at half seven or the workshop or whatever you want to call it, is we'll say, arrive for seven o'clock for um, a mini um, hand spa or mini pampering or a welcome drink ready for the workshop to begin for half seven, something like that. Oh, yeah, that's 
That's a good idea. Yeah, arrive even earlier, so, say earlier time. Yeah. yeah so if it was yeah, you, cool. I'd say, Jane, okay. and the workshop starts at eight. So if you arrive from half seven, you'll have a welcome drink and a mini ham spa. And then eight o'clock, we'll start prompt, something like that. <coughs> <coughs> okay, brilliant. Um, just uh, know that people will cancel and either right up till kind of 15, 10 minutes before people will still cancel. But even if you're left with just one or two people, you know, I know it's disappointing, but just make the most of it. And actually, if you've only got them two people, you can really to uh, one party one time and she ended up buying loads of stuff. Is that right? Did you hear that? You went in and out. What did you say? Oh, I, say, I was just saying about sometimes, even if you just get one person turn up, you can still really, you know, kind of go for it and pamper that one person. And oh, just make yeah, them... like what happened with Claire. Yeah. Claire. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, she ordered about 700 QV of stuff because she had literally one-on-one -on -one treatment. Yeah, amazing. So just don't fret if people cancel. And, it, and if everybody cancels and you're already there, just practice with your... Um, if you're with your teammate, just practice or, you know, run through, go through it with your host. She'll enjoy it. Um, okay. <coughs> so when you um, get to the party night, I'm not going to go over all of it because there's so many different ways you can do a party, but arrive an hour earlier so you can set it all up and you, you're ready in plenty of time. Make it look really pretty. Make sure you've got all your drinks prepped. And then when people arrive, greet them. And like Danny said, you can do the hand spa and try and remember their names, which is a, a biggie for me, because I never remember people's names, but if you can remember the name. difference though, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Because then as well, when you, you're helping them or you're playing the games, you can relate back to them. And it's, I think it's just really personal, but I'm terrible with names. So I'm, and it's, especially when we did military parties, because the Polish names as well, it made it even hot. <laughs> it was all good fun. <laughs> so then when you when everybody's there really quickly and then thank your host and give her, over her gifts in front of everybody else and make the gifts really special for her whether it's um, a couple of products or some flowers or wine you know really show that you're so grateful for her hosting that party and make sure that the products that you do take if you are taking products for your host suit the host don't just take anything and hope that it will suit her you know relate it to who that person is if she doesn't wear any makeup it's a waste of time giving her a foundation you know you really need to relate it to who it is and then at the end of the party whichever party you decide to do um, go over the um, discounts that they can get on the night if they order on that night we usually say you can have an exclusive 20 percent discount and um, hand out the catalogues and all the order forms with that. So that's hosting the party. So I'm going to go on to the business side now and prospecting. And I'm, I'm going to try and keep it as short as I can because there's so much. But most of this I've taken from the Jerry Rosenthal trainings. There are so many different videos and audios that you can watch on prospecting and one-to-ones. But I found this is absolutely fantastic. And they're all still on Danny's SoundCloud account which you can find on the internet and that's just where I've been listening to them um, and I've listened to them over and over again because they're just so good so with prospecting obviously you've got your cold or your warm, your warm market so your warm market is your friends and family obviously they want to know what it is you're doing you want to just try and keep it as simple as you can um, you know I'm a health and wellness consultant I help people with either bringing in an extra income something they can build up gradually eventually enabling them to either cut down their working hours or give up work completely um, basically giving them life their life back no more employer and it gives them time and financial freedom or i help people with finding safer healthier alternatives to the products they are currently using I'm finding many people are now concerned about the dangers of unnecessary added chemicals and parabens in their products or they've tried lots of different things on the market and they're just not getting the desired results so depending on how confident you are um, you can either go on to explain yourself um, about that or arrange to meet with your sponsor to have the one-to-one -one. you know if you, 
if you're confident and you've been doing it a while, go on your own to do the one-to-one. -one. But if not, arrange a date with your sponsor. So then cold market, um, a lot of it we do on, online. So that is all about making friends. It's not going out there and searching for people to just sign up to your business. It's building relationships, building trust. You need to have a common interest and a connection. So a lot of this you can find on different Are Facebook groups. Are you telling me that if I put a post on a group and say, I'm an Arbonne consultant, PM me for more details, it's not going to work? It's actually not, and you'll get kicked off the group. <laughs> They'll go... You can, oh, this is that thing going wrong. <laughs> you can F right off. She's blocked. <laughs> That's what you'll get. Pyramid, big flashing letters will pop up on the group. <laughs> so, yeah, build a friendship. <laughs> Don't be inboxing people saying, how would you like to join my business? So, eventually, as you build that friendship, you will just naturally lead in a conversation about what each other does for a living. Um, as you progress on, you can offer to send videos. Um, I know me and Danny have made our own, and if you can make your own eventually, it really helps. I think it's far better when they're your own personal videos because it relates more to you. Um, and if they're local, you can arrange to meet up and have that one-to-one. -one. So out and about, um, you can meet so many people. So people serving you in shops, waitresses, your doctor, your dentist, your hairdresser, just mums in a shop. Um, just strike up a conversation. Anything you know that relates to them, their makeup looks nice. Oh, you must have had a hard day at work. Anything that you can kind of strike up a conversation about. If they're working like a waitress or something in a shop, um, you can ask them, do they enjoy working there? How long have they been working there? Um, what time does their shift end? How many more hours have you got to go on? Unless they are 100% happy with their job and enjoy it absolutely 100% with every aspect of their job, there will be something that they will moan about, whether it be not being able to finish early, not having a lunch break, missing the sunshine outside because they're stuck in all day. So whatever it is, pick up on that and offer them an option and a solution to that. So you could say, oh, you know, how's your day going? What time do you get to finish today? And the person would say, oh, well, I don't get to finish until about six o'clock tonight. So then you could say, oh, that's, that's bad for you. Do you have children that you've got to get back to? And they might say, yeah, they're actually at the childminders. And you can then go on to say, oh, that must be really hard for you having to leave them. Not, never, you know, not to mention the cost of having to pay the childminders. So then they might say, yeah, it is a bit of a pain, but to be honest, I've got no other option. I've got to work. So then you can kind of lead in and go, well, you know what? I actually might be able to help you with that. Are you open-minded to um, hearing about other career or business opportunities? So hopefully they will say, well, yeah, I guess so. If they say no, you can just say, well, that's okay. You know, that's fine. You're obviously happy in your work and kind of leave it at that. But if they say yes, um, go on to say, well, okay, look, I know you're working and I don't want to disturb you now. So what day is a good time for you um, to kind of meet up and chat more about this and then arrange a, a, oh, a suitable time and a place to meet up. Um, and, but, and just confirm with them that... You, like, I just wanted to say, like you, I'm sure, I'm really busy with life and have lots to fit in. So I'm sure we don't want to mess each other about. So that this date that we've set, we, you will actually definitely be there. Because a couple of the traits needed within this business are reliability and to be honest. And I really think that you have those traits in you. And then hopefully they'll go, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely be there. Yeah, that's lovely. So just to confirm. Or you could just say... I can see you're really busy. Can I take your mobile number and I will call you as soon as, uh, later on this evening when you've got more time to arrange a meeting and then just do that on the phone. Just keep it simple and to the point. If they do ask, <coughs> start asking questions, you can just say, oh yeah, I'm sure you have lots of questions, but you know, you need to get back to your work and I really need to get on. I promise you that when we meet up, I will go over all of the questions that you do have. So, don't leave anything um, out. 
And then what you want to do is just call them the day before the meeting just to confirm that meeting again to make sure that they're actually going to be there. Um, just something else I've jotted down here that Jerry goes over. You can say to them, when uh, if they start asking about the questions, you can say, this is definitely an opportunity that can seriously change your finan financial situation dramatically, giving you financial and time freedom. Are you the kind of person who would seriously sit down and explore that, an opportunity like that? And he says, if they say no, again, move on. Um, but before you do move on, ask them either about the products, would they be interested in using the product side, or for a referral. Don't just walk away. Ask them if they know anybody else who might be interested in the, in the business. So once you've arranged all that and you get to your meeting, it's on to doing the one-to-one. -one. And again, this is all on the Jerry Rosenthal uh, training. So arrive early. Get there and get set up with your laptop. Bring up the Discover Arbonne presentation ready so you're not searching around when they get there. And what you want to do is take with you <coughs> is some products to suit them so they take away and trial the product because if they don't like the products, they're not going to be able to do the business because obviously we need to be a product of the product and be able to recommend them honestly. Full-size products are best. <coughs> Sorry, hang on. But if you've only got samples, that's fine. And then you also want to include a folder or a business pack. The business packs you can actually get off the source are really, really good. And they've got catalogue in them. They've got the Arbon Opportunity. They've got Ion Arbons in there. There's some really good stuff in the business packs. But you can put all of that off the source and enclose that yourself. I've not got one at the minute made up. But in there you can put... Um, the compensation plan, an opportunity brochure, an overview of Arbonne themselves, and some the Ion Arbons make them so that they relate to that person. So there's loads and loads of different ones, all different careers and people on the source. Buy them a drink. So, you know, you're welcoming them in, ask them if they'd like a drink, and then ask how they are. Just have a general chat about their day. Don't just kind of start bombarding them with info, you know, kind of break the ice a bit. So then you need to find out all about them. This is all about them, not about you. You need to find out about their life and their dreams, their needs and their family, what they actually want out of life. So some of the questions that uh, Jerry suggests asking are, the first one, if you could be or do or live wherever you wanted and however you wanted in life and money was no object in five years time where would that be where would you like to be in life how would you like your life to look and he says if they don't answer straight away leave it about any eight seconds and just kind of prompt them so say would you like to be living abroad would you like to have an extra income coming into your house would you like your husband to be able to cook down his hours at work anything like that so when they've given you all those dreams and changes that they'd like in their life. Can you see this? Oh, well done. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. There you go. Am I? No, it's not good enough. <laughs> yeah. Just that part of visual. I'm only joking. <laughs> so the next question, if you continue to do what you're doing, there we go, if you carry on doing what you are currently doing, how long will it take you to create that lifestyle that you've described? So it just kind of gets them thinking about their life. If they don't make some change in their life, how soon are all those dreams that they want going to come true? Next. So the next question. So I've asked how long it will take you to achieve your dreams and you have answered forever. So obviously, you know, they're looking at their life now and seeing that actually those things are never going to happen. So be honest with me, how does that make you feel? So you're really touching on their feelings and getting them really thinking about, you know, their life and how they might want it to change. So then you can go on and say, so if you want the lifestyle that you have described and you have realised what you're doing currently won't allow you to achieve that, 
then you've either got to give up your dreams or find a way to make them happen. So what would you choose? If they go on to say, well, I'd just probably give up on my dreams, then actually they're probably not quite suitable for this business because if they're not that dedicated about their life and their dreams, they're not going to be dedicated to the business. But if they actually say, you know, I would make a way to make it happen, then you go on to the next point. Okay, so then you can say to them, so today I'm going to show you a business vehicle and you can, it does say you can put this into your own words. So obviously don't use this word for word, use with what you are comfortable with, um, but try and stick to this kind of um, system because it is just so good and just leads from one question to the next. If you could start today part-time at first and work around your current schedule, let me move my box out of the way, I can't see. that can help you achieve your dreams faster than the path you are currently on, if I was able to show you a way to do that, how excited would you be? And then hopefully they say, oh, yeah, you know, really excited. So then you would say, let me show you this amazing vehicle called Arbonne that can be the answer to what you really want. So then you want to go on and do whatever presentation that you're um, used to. So obviously the Discover Arbonne pre presentation... You want to keep it to 20 minutes maximum. And he suggests that you keep the compensation plan slide right up until the last minute. So that after that, you can ask, <coughs> will your job that you're doing now, that you're working at in the, um, yeah, let me read the slide, makes more sense. Let me ask you a question. You are going to be working for the next three to five years, aren't you, doing what you're doing? So they will answer, yeah, more like the next 25, 30 years. So what are the odds that your job will pay you £10,000 a month in the next three to five years? And they're likely to say, actually not likely at all, it will never happen. <laughs> So then you can go on and say to them, that is exactly the reason you need to consider joining me in this business because Arbon is going to give you something that your job cannot and it will give you a chance, a chance to come into the business with no prior experience or skills and give you a chance to make that kind of money. Even if you fall short and only make half or even a quarter of that, you'll still be able to work from home be there for your children, get the chance to drive a brand new Mercedes and design your own schedule and have total control and freedom over your whole, your own life. And that is the kind of lifestyle that most of us have dreamed of. Don't you agree? And hopefully they're saying yes and they're getting more and more excited. So to close, you've got four questions that you want to finish off with. <coughs> so the first one, did everything that I shared with you today make sense? So you Obviously, if you've done a good job, they will answer yes. You've gone over the DA and made perfect sense to them. So the next question is, can you see the enormous need for the products and the education that Arbonne is providing to families? So explain that, you know, what a difference the products are making and that the business is making to people's lives. If they say yes, you can always go back to this if you need to and say to them that actually they agreed that there is a need for this. So if, they, if later on down the line they say, well, actually, I'm not sure about it now after all, you can relate back to this and say, well, actually, you agreed that there was a need for this. And then ask, did I answer most of your questions? So you're not going to have answered all of their questions, but did you answer most of them? And that will just give them the opportunity to ask anything else that they're not sure about. And then by finishing off, say to them, so based on what you have seen today, does this look like something that you can see yourself doing if you have the proper coaching and training and support? And that last bit is really, really important to say so that they know they do not need to go into this business and know everything about this business. We will literally teach them every step of the way what to do. So then you can go on to whether they say a no, a maybe, or a yes. So you're going to get different replies. So if it's a no, it's not for me. <coughs> you 
can say, I totally respect that. This business isn't for everyone and I respect your honesty, but let me ask you two quick questions before we finish. Who comes to mind that might, that may be interested in looking at this and they can make up their own minds just like you did. So that's just asking for that referral, get referral again. Don't just say, well, no, you know, that's fine. Then we'll leave it there. You know, find out who else might trusted. And then you can go on as well. Say most people who might not be interested in business are interested in trying some of our products. I'd love to, love to still have the chance to take these products home to try a few days and give me feedback. So still leave those products with them to try. And you can ask them what they'd like to try more. Would they like to try the makeup or the um, skincare? And you can tailor these options. Um, but by giving them that option, they are inclined to pick one or the other rather than just saying no they don't want to try anything at all and then after they've tried the products they might think well actually these products are so good I can see why the business makes perfect sense <coughs> if they answer maybe then answer okay so on a scale of one to ten uh, with no interest being a one and ten being ready to join right now whereabouts are you so most will say between six and eight. So then you want to ask them, well, what can I help you with um, to get you to attend and be uh, wanting to join their business? And they will go on and say um, what their real concern is. Um, so it might be, I need to try the products first, or I need to speak to my other half, or I need to see whether I've got the finances, something, it could be anything. So after that, um, so after you try the product, so say it's the product, so after you've tried the and you love them which I know you will then you'll be ready to start so then again they'll say yes no or maybe so if it's a yes which is fantastic which is what we want assume that they are interested in joining unless they give you a reason not so you can say to them that's fantastic so is it okay if I share with you um, how we actually join up then so then you want to be going um, through the website and showing them the um, sign up process um, and that and um, he says something about shipping there but I don't think that counts to us here is that just in America uh, can you hear me yeah um, it's because of about the uh, postage and package but when somebody pays 56 pounds that includes postage and package but yeah. if all the products they'll have to pay between six to ten pounds on the postage and he was saying just be just be really transparent with people he said because for some people when you add on six pounds fifty in postage they won't mind but for some people that is a big deal so make sure you say to them it's going to cost fifty six pounds to start your business if you want to order some products obviously add that on and then postage is about between six and ten pounds depending on what you order Yeah, yeah, because I think actually that postage does surprise me sometimes, and even with clients as well, not just joining the business. Um, so yeah, go through the website with them, show them the signing up process, <coughs> and obviously you need to speak to them about what products they want to try. They might want to just start off with the basic products, or they might want to go ahead and do a full business order and get as many products as they can in to start them off on a really strong footing, which is brilliant. But also be aware that if it's in the UK, they can only spend £200. If it's over that, it gets held for seven days. So just something else to be aware of. <coughs> so hopefully they will send, sign up with you there and then. But if they're going to sign up after the meeting, send them home with their products and their um, paperwork and stuff and try and get back in touch with them within 24 to 48 hours to arrange another meetup. If you leave it any longer, they'll start drifting off and start questions will start popping in their head and they'll start worrying about things and they'll start talking to people. And before you know it, they've been completely put off the whole idea. So you want to try and kind of get it wrapped up as, as quickly as you can. And then you want to finish off. That's a good point at the bottom, actually. Don't let them go out and try and start talking to Arbon to everybody straight away because I think that's something we were guilty of at the start. We literally went out and thought, well, yes, I'm doing our bond. I can talk to everybody. And you literally just scare everybody off before you start because you just do not know what you're talking about. So you need to wait <coughs> to have that train in there. Um, so I've just about done now. So I'll just finish off. Um, 
for me, I just show them through the website and show them all how it works and where everything is, where the source is, things they can refer to, and their monthly requirement. So obviously we have to do 150 QV a month, so you need to go over that with them and how much roughly that might cost them a month, but explain to them that it's not just them doing that on their own. You know, that comes from them, clients, family and friends, parties and things like that. Um, so once they've signed up, they've done their order, you want to be arranging their launches and um, training. Say to them that you'll send out their welcome email. You'll go through their starter pack with you. So basically following the 10 steps um, that's uh, available to everybody. Just follow that. And then the last bit that Joe talks about is objection. So during your prospecting or during your one-to-one, -one, you're going to come across loads of objections. So listen to the training because on there it gives some really, really good um, answers to problems that will pop up. And I did do a video on that last time. So it's on the, on the more group somewhere. So you might get it to so my family approve. Will my staff at me? Just sympathize with them and say, yeah, I understand all of those concerns that you have. Um, and again, listen to that training and it will give you all the, all the replies if you're not sure how to answer them on there. So uh, all my training done for tonight. So that was great training, Jane. That all right? Yeah, yeah good. Really, really, good. <laughs> really great. So if anybody's got any questions uh, they want to ask, feel free to unmute yourselves. Other than that, I think Danny's going to go over um, just some plans for the month ahead, or any tips or anything like that, Danny. Uh, I didn't have anything planned to be honest. Um, I just thought it might be nice just to have a bit of a team sort of like throw some ideas around because last month was absolutely amazing and I just thought it might be nice just to have a bit of clarity on exactly what, what we are obviously all doing with our business and I'm more than happy to hear other people's suggestions. So what when me and Jane first started our business, um, I think me and Jane are like the longest ones on this call yeah um, <laughs> we didn't really get anything about how to do this business we just we, we just had a book and then we were off, when we were off and that was it so we've had to kind of establish some sort of system because everybody always says stick to the system stick to the system like you can't go wrong but when you haven't got a system it's hard to stick to the system so through trial and error i put together the top 10 steps and I just really wondered what people's feedback was on it and on how you find in the top 10 steps. So I'll just, let's, I'll just find them on here so we can see what they all are. Um, so when somebody starts their business with you, it's in the pinned post on the Hello Future page and also in your welcome to the team email. So number one, I've got um, how to go through the Arbonne website. Number two is filling out your business plan. I don't know if anyone actually does fill out their business plan or not, but we can ask in a minute. People can volunteer that information. Number three, aim for strong start and district manager qualification. Book your pre-launches. Invite people to your launches. And then you've got your events that go on throughout the year. Personal development and the top calls to listen to, which I personally absolutely love. Do your launches. And then duplicate and then just have loads and loads of fun so I'd just be interested to know what people's um what people's opinion was on the top 10 things to do oh Anna I started filling out my business plan I didn't finish it plan <laughs> I did I did um, a business plan and what what do you think Natalie to the top 10 steps but I thought well, I thought they were really, really good. Um, I did follow it and um, I did go through it. <clears throat> um, I think I, because I was away from you and you were my sponsor um, and you'd just gone to Vegas as well, I think having that in place because you weren't available to be close to me helped me massively. Otherwise, I think <laughs> I would have just got scared. and. Um, just thought, oh my God, I can't do it. Yeah, okay. Is there anything you would change on it? Um, <clears throat> probably the business plan thing, if anything, just purely because, like, if you're not intentionally, like, business-minded, I think you'd think business plan, like, I wouldn't even know how to do it. Yeah. Um, so, other than that, that would be the only thing, okay. to be honest. 
Okay, um, it's really interesting to hear what other people think. Does anyone else want to say anything about what they thought? I think the 10 steps are great, but say, I think that's the only one that perhaps not ever really finished off is, is the, uh, this, you know, like the plan in the starter pack. Yeah. I, ju I just think sometimes you just don't get time, get around to finishing it off to filling it in. I think the names list is brilliant to jot down names because that gets your mind yeah. going, remembering people. But Go on then, Vic. You've unmuted yourself. I was just going to say, as I was the guinea pig, yeah. <laughs> what do you? What's your opinion? Because I'm, I'm all, I'm all up for improving what we do. Um, literally, I thought everyone was doing the same thing, so I had no idea at the time that it was a new thing. Um, I'm not sure. I did, I did my little folder, and I think um, printing everything off, getting it all in a folder, and getting your head straight just makes you realise that this isn't just some silly little yeah. game playing it just makes you start to think quite business-like and I know everyone that I've started up has really liked that part of it that we get our folders ready and we get the stuff out and start like how you mean to go on. Do your team, Vic, your team have a lot of success duplicating. Do your team go through the top 10 steps or do you do something different? Um, well, I've always passed it on to Tejal and kind of encouraged her to do the same sort of thing and I know, I know AJ definitely did. Okay. And do, um, you, yeah. do, you, do you all print out the business pack, which is like 20 pages, and then the activity binder, which is about 60 pages? I printed it all. That's what I did. That's what AJ did. And that's what all AJ's downline did. Um, Tejo printed it off. Um, and then from that point, Tejo was really taking control of her team. So I'd have to double check. Yeah. I'm thinking... Did you, did you like having the, Natalie, did you like having the activity binder and the business plan? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I've only stopped carrying it around recently. I used to carry it literally everywhere with me because I was scared if I didn't have <laughs> That is brilliant, that business pack. I sent mine out by email. I don't know whether any of them have printed it off, but it's definitely worth having. Yeah, it's packed full of information. Yeah, I have it and I like it. What about Rachel? You've obviously not long started your business. Did you print it out? Um, well, I think I'm on unmuted. Uh, I haven't printed it off yet, but I was going to ask the top 10 steps. Where will I find that? Is that in the business pack? They're in the wel welcome to the team email and in the pinned post on the Hello Future page. Here. Shush. You know, when you very first joined, Rachel, I sent you the email. Oh, yeah. Do you know, I've forgotten about that. Yeah. I need to go back over that and, and print those out. I can resend you them if you need, if you can't find them. Yeah, I'll have a look for them tomorrow. Well, when I get home, I'm not home at the minute, but I need to go through those and make myself a folder. I think that's the bit that I'm missing at the moment that I haven't done yet. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Gemma, what has Luke done with you? How have you got started? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, he just sent me um, just the same stuff, I think, that you guys sent to yours. Um, just the welcome pack and things like that. So I've just printed it all off. Um, and I just keep that with me. <laughs> did you find it useful or not? And you can yeah. Be yeah, no, I really did. Really useful. It was really helpful. It definitely helped me out. <laughs> Oh. oh okay does anyone else want to say anything about getting started in the top 10 to do i just i think it's just really important to sort of i know like jane touched on it and said oh don't talk to too many people but i did the opposite i just told everyone I think maybe because I'm, I am so passionate about the parabens side of things um, because of mum, um, I kind of, I guess, probably knew what I was kind of talking about anyway. So I had something to relate to with Arbonne because it sort of stood by what I believed in anyway. 
so maybe that's probably why it worked for me but um yeah I did sort of just tell the world really <laughs> Yeah, I don't think there's a, there's no right or wrong answer, really, is there? It's just some things work for some and some things... Yeah. I think, I think it depends on... Sorry, I think it depends on, like, if your friends and family are open-minded as well. Um, because if they're not, then they're not going to accept anything you've got to say. But if they are, I think it, you should be able to tailor it to if you think that they're able to listen to it or not. Yeah. I've got a lady that's joining later this month and she wants to um, go straight for cold market. She doesn't actually want to speak to her friends and family mm -hmm. first. She says she doesn't feel comfortable doing that, which I said was absolutely fine. She can, you know, do it whichever way she wants. But I did mention that usually the launches we do are usually for kind of friends and family because um, obviously get their support and share that network and I did say to with cold market you're not going to be able to do that straight away because obviously you need to build that relationship and friendship um, but so that's kind of a new thing for me going at it a different angle rather than kind of going straight in with the launches and things but so I think she's just nervous that she, she needs to do or know loads of stuff to start and I've said to her, you know don't worry about it we'll do everything to start with yeah so I think that was the main concern, but. Yeah, so that's all I was going to really say. Just ask for people's feedback and advice, really. Um, just on that. Cool. <laughs> Did so know? is everybody excited for June then? Who's going to smash some goals in June? Me. <laughs> 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 uh, you know when Brilliant. they say set goals that scare you I'm shit scared <laughs> <laughs> I love it I love been getting your messages the last couple of days but it's like because it was oh. just me all over when I was going into call I was a mess <laughs> I'm a mess and today I thought like I'd be amazing amazingly excited I'm really really scared she's got Jane she's got the same thing as you where she's got QV in another month that Oh. It's been, you've got to manually deduct it like that. Yeah, it's been horrendous. Everything I've gone through this month, I've had to remember and, and take off every time. So this month now, I won't have to do that because that will be on the month before. So I can just start off with a clear dashboard this month and know exactly what I need. But yeah, it is a pain. I'm going to keep deducting it. <laughs> I just don't think I can cope with the stress of that, what we went through. Last night today again. I don't. I think I'll combust. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys got any top tips? Seeing as you both are now turning over ten thousand QVs a month, what top tips have you got for people? <laughs> don't do it till the last minute. <laughs> definitely, definitely don't. Try aim to complete two days before. <laughs> Yeah, just just don't sit back and relax because you can't, unfortunately, because you know you've just got to keep at it and it's been hard and I lost about a week out this month for being so poorly and so then I had to try and make it up um, at the end which was probably didn't help our team we sometimes do that you know you have that rush to the end of the month and then you think oh phew, first week let's just have a little bit of a rest we've just can't you just gotta no. <laughs> just gotta Got to get as soon as that, that month ends, the new month starts, and you've just got to get on and back onto it. Um, you know, and it, and it is hard work, but it's just so so worth it at the end. I mean, don't kill yourself, obviously. You know, don't make yourself feel. Be be realistic because you we've still got families to look after and, and lives to lead. Have that time out, but don't just kind of sit and think, oh well, I'll watch X Factor tonight or something. You know, if if you could be. <laughs> networking instead you know just to make the effort to and and is it for the for people like um so i've got like four in district manager qualification so i'm helping to um help them but then when you've got somebody higher like for us we're all trying to help danny get to nation if you've got 
your sponsor trying to reach area, do all you can to help them. Because, you know, at some point you will be in that position and you will need all the help you can get. So don't just sit back and think, oh, you know, I'm trying to reach district manager. I'll reach that and then that's it. Just go all out to try and help, help you direct as well because it will come back to you. You know, everybody needs that help, whether you're up or down. So, I so we'll do what we can, Danny, to get you there. I definitely second that. So there was back right in the early days when I thought, oh, I've met my strong start target or whatever it was. And therefore, I don't need to do any more. I'll have a rest. And even as awful as it is, had a little order and thought, well, I've got what I need this month. I'll wait for next month. And you just don't. I just know where, how it felt from the other side of it last night. And I was like, no, please don't hold anything. <laughs> so, yeah. It definitely comes around full circle. Yeah, it does. Natalie, did you want to give any top tips? I know you're generating area volume now. Oh God, um, don't go to Dubai the last few days of the month. Oh my God, I've been a nightmare. I've been saying to Gary, ah, I really shouldn't be sat here. I should be, there's, there's a group of women over there. Maybe I should go and talk to them. <laughs> Gary's like, don't you dare, you're on holiday. You needed a break as well. You've worked flat out for the past two months. You needed a break. I know, I know. I was like, but I've got, my, I've got my, I've got my business cards in my bag, and I've also got a brochure. So, I, so I it's not. <laughs> Natalie, at the minute, hasn't hasn't been um, officially into area qual yet. We're still working oh, on it. God, what? Oh, it's horrible waiting as well, isn't it? God, oh. It's not going to happen this month. I just, it's not. I, I haven't. Like, I'm, I'm sure. I'm too short to get into it. Um, and I've done, everyone's maxed out their, like, their money and their expenditure. They can't, I just, I've got a lot going on this month and I've got four of my um, consultants in DMQ. So I'm going to really try and work with those and get them built up and stuff like that. Then I've got hopefully another two, possibly three people starting this month as well. Um so I'm going to be a bit busy, so it's going to be good. I just can't wait to get back into it now. Um, on Friday and Saturday, I've got a two-day launch with um, with a clothing brand. Um, I'm, they're launching, they're doing like children's wear. They're doing their launch for that, and I'm doing that as well. I'm in there doing my Arbon thing um, for two full days. And that's, fr well, to, I'll get back Thursday at like midnight. And that's Friday and Saturday that I'm doing that. So I'll be straight back into it. <laughs> so, yeah, but I really, I don't know about tips. I don't think I've got any tips right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some sponsoring tips from you. Oh, God. Well, at least I've helped someone. <laughs> Scare them. <laughs> Did you just say scare them? Scare them. Scare them? Yeah. Show your top tips. Oh, I thought you yeah. said scare. <laughs> I was like, what oh. tip is that? <laughs> so, what, my top tips for sponsoring? Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know really. I just, maybe I'm quite, com like, I'm, I've said this before, I'm not a confident person in myself. I'm confident about the business and I'm confident about where I want it to go. Um, and I, I guess, um, sorry about that. Um, I guess that probably comes across. I don't, I don't know. Cause I really don't know what, what I'm doing. I just talk to everyone. I see everyone as sort of like potential business partner and just talk to them. Not afraid to talk to anybody about anything. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I can say, really. Just go for it. You've got nothing to lose. At the end of the day, they're just going to say no. Oh, well. Find someone else. It is just talking to as many people as you can. Um, you know, it is a numbers game. It's true what, what they say. Because you are going to have so many no's, so you need to make up. Yeah. As many as you to get them yeses. I agree. 
Okay. But be a bit choosy as well, because I think like when we first joined, we'd literally sign up anybody that came along, join my business and sign them up. But really make sure that they are the right kind of person to join your business. Don't just sign them up because they look like they could do with the help in hand or you feel sorry for them because it doesn't work you've got to think as well like when someone starts this as a business yeah people join for all different reasons but you want to be spending most of your time with the people like natalie for example or pretty much everybody on this call but i'm just using that for for an example somebody like natalie when i spoke to her about this (laughs) i asked her what she wanted and she told me what she wanted i was like okay well i can help you achieve that and she opened her business up and from day one she treated it like where she lives in um, Saltburn on Sea, she treated it like she'd spent two hundred thousand pounds getting a shop, fitting the shop out with shelves, getting all the products in, employing staff, and she treated it like that thousand thousand pound shop that was open five days a week, six days a week, from you know mm. from nine o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock yeah. at night or whatever. She did treat it like that, like she didn't treat it like well, my shop's going to be open one hour here and then maybe one hour no. next week. And she did treat it like, like that million pound business. And a lot of people do, but then equally, a lot of people don't. And that's fine. Like, it's not for us to make people feel bad. Absolutely not. But don't spend a lot of time with people <laughs> that really are just doing this as a hobby or as a consumer. That's what I would say. Yeah, that was really good advice. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So invest your time where you're most wanted and needed, really. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Yeah. Does anyone want to add anything else? (laughs) I'm reading what Anna's put. What did she put? If I would have a deli in where? Stop span a Spanish deli, I think. I know my <coughs> in Kingston. I bet they don't come to your Arbon business. <laughs> I tell you what, I was saying to somebody today, I can't even remember who I've had over. Oh, Katie Keys. And um I was saying, my goodness, if like any of my friends said to me that I opened up a coffee shop or opened up any kind of business, I'd be like, brilliant. What can I do to support you? What can I, what can I buy? Like, tell me how I can help you. Yeah, Anna Arbon, no, no. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Until, until a year later, because I have this now, a year later, when people are like, you know that thing you told me about? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at some of the products or I'm looking at it from an income opportunity aspect. Oh, right. Right. people do come back but it take they take their time it probably if someone watches the recording on this i probably think we keep going quiet but we're reading the chat Bye. Okay, well, I'm going to um, love you and leave you now, guys, because I've got to be up early in the morning for checking out. Have a nice yes. rest of your holiday, Natalie. Must be a hard life in Dubai. Oh, really hard. Seriously. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> not a month end, anyway. I know, yeah, definitely not a month end. Lovely. Oh, See you all soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.